Matt, as you know from watching sports as long as I have, and us, uh, we we've certainly traded you know our our fan stories from from the past on all levels in different sports. That sometimes the free agent pickup doesn't turn out to be you know the big splash, the big baseball deadline deal that's supposed to be you know a World Series winner turns out to be many times not what it was supposed to be. So Caleb Williams is well sought after, and he did turn in a tremendous season at Oklahoma last year, six rushing touchdowns, 21 to four TD to pick ratio. So he's the real deal. And I think he's got enough reps under his belt to show this, but he's not a perfect quarterback. He's not the guy that we just saw retire yesterday and announced that Tom Brady, he's not arrived. He'll make his mistakes. He had a couple uh, off games against Baylor uh, and, and someone else down the line. So where would you place him in your pantheon of current quarterbacks? You know, we've got a lot of really good ones moving on, of course, to the NFL. Uh, but for 22, you know, when when you're thinking, OK, USC just got a what top five quarterback, top 10 quarterback. I, I think overall on a broader level, it's probably top 10. Like, I, I don't I don't think uh, he might he's a lock to be top five, but. When you put him in the Pac-12, where and hey, you and you and I have had this running conversation for several months, and it's and it's always worth continuing to remind people about this that the bar has been set so low in the Pac-12 with quarterback play, and again, Utah was able to feast on Anthony Brown twice in, in blowouts of Oregon last year, uh, and then you go up against C.J. Stroud in Ohio State, completely different universe, like two different sports, going from Anthony Brown to playing uh, C.J. Stroud. And we saw the the, the Grand canyon size gulf in the results between the two in terms of how well Utah's defense fared. So the fact that you have Caleb Williams in the Pac-12 specifically, that might make him a top five quarterback on an adjusted scale. So like even if you're inclined to say he's not a top five quarterback overall, well, but situated within the Pac-12, it's probably going to enhance everything he does. He's going to have a comparatively better time than, you know, if he was going up against Dave Aranda and Baylor again, you know, or, or, you know, if we were to project Oklahoma going into the SEC in 2023, you know, that would be a much tougher road for him. But in the Pac-12, and it's really a similar philosophy to what Lincoln Riley had. I want to be the big fish, you know, wherever I am. And in the Pac-12, I have easily a much better chance of being the big fish, the king, than I am in, in the in a Big 12 with Dave with Dave Aranda and Baylor uh, and, and with other uh, competition there. So, you know, I think the Pac-12 part of this, it's, it's so salient uh, to the conversation that it's going to make Caleb Williams look better, just as it's going to probably make Lincoln Riley look better. I think that's a very, very big part of this. One other really big picture thing to note about Caleb Williams as a quarterback. You think about the great USC quarterbacks of all time. Matt Leinart, Carson Palmer, and then back in the day, Paul McDonald on the late 1970s national championship teams uh, with John Robinson. And then Pat Hayden under John McKay. Um, there's never been a USC quarterback who is such a, a lethal dual threat athlete the way Caleb Williams is. Now, USC's quarterbacks used to be game managers. I mean, certainly in the 70s, in the McKay-Robinson era, you know, their main job was to hand the ball off to a stud tailback, student body right, you know, just make enough passes uh, to facilitate, you know, the running game and a, and a ball control, bone crushing, smash mouth offense. Um you know, that and of course, the college football was a running back oriented sport in the 70s, as you know, well. Um, and but even in the in the 21st century, even under Pete Carroll, Carson Palmer, Matt Liner, straight drop back pro style quarterbacks. They were not running threats at all. Their job was to get the ball to the fast guys at the running back position at wide receiver. So Caleb Williams totally breaks the mold of what the great USC quarterbacks have been not just under Pete Carroll, but going back 50, 60 years so that he has a very special opportunity uh, to carve out a unique place in history, uh, not just at USC, but also in the Pac-12 as well. 
And it's a great point that you just made because as I was filtering through USC quarterbacks going back to the Pat Hayden era, I figured, okay, once I get to the the, the last 10 or 15 years, because most programs across the country have featured dual threat quarterbacks, I'm going to come across no, <laughs> not, not yeah. at USC, not nope. at USC. Uh, maybe the most mobile or the, the two most mobile, but they weren't running quarterbacks. They were pass first guys that come to mind would be Vince Evans and Rodney Pete. They were mobile guys. They could move. They could, they could run for a first down if they needed to, but they weren't dual threat guys. Interesting.